This is Stephen Sargent live from East Toronto Blockchain Futures Conference 2022. We're here with co-founder Alex Lepescu to talk about Omnia Protocol. They're all about privacy, security, and compliance in the blockchain infrastructure. Alex, tell us a little bit about yourself and the company. I'm really excited to be at uh, the Futures Conference. So a few things about myself. Uh, I worked previously in a national defense system, uh, mostly on cybersecurity. Um, so the background is all about the cryptography securing things. So this is how we started. We were searching some uh, protocols within the on-chain privacy. Uh, you know, like uh, protocols such as uh, Tornado Cash, and it's all about the ring signatures, uh, zero knowledge proofs. And we identified the gap within the off-chain privacy. And that was the section where we want to focus the most. So that to summarize uh, in a few words what we do, we built an, uh, an untraceable node infrastructure. So how would I put it like in simple words is, you know how internet service providers were back in the 90s where they provided you uh, access to the internet? This is how we are for Web3. It's just that we are doing it in a private and a secure way. Now, with DeFi protocols and compliance, we just heard you mentioned Tornado Cash, which just recently got sanctioned this afternoon by OFAC. How do you balance privacy, security, as well as compliance requirements? So I would say that it's not easy, first of all. Uh, it's a challenge, but we do like challenges. So if you think about how we uh, build the infrastructure, you have these uh, privacy layers, which are like the entry points within the secure part of the network, which is ensuring the privacy. And this is where the integration point is done with uh, technology providers who we ensure to being compliant. So we talk here about companies such as Chain Analysis, Elliptic. So we have that kind of integrations. And what we do, we dry run the simulations. The, we simulate, we do a dry run of the transactions to ensure that if the transaction is going to or from a sanctioned address, we are going to drop that transaction. So the compliance is being ensured right at the edge of the, uh, the protocol. So it basically covers on-chain and off-chain activity yeah. at, at the height of it. Now, how important is privacy? We've heard things like front-running, MEV, sandwich attacks, flashbots. How important is privacy night right now in the ecosystem? Yeah, so I think in my opinion, it has two sides and both of them are equally important. So first is security, like your physical security. We've seen examples, and I know this might seem far-stretched, but we've seen people being kidnapped because malicious people were able to identify geolocation based on a specific address which were holding like huge amounts of money so that's a, a physical risk but you also have the risk where it costs you money and you mentioned mev and front running and to break it apart actually what front running is it's exploiting the pre-mining lack of uh, uh, privacy because when you do a transaction you sign it you broadcast it but you need to wait for a few minutes and the transaction is in a pending state and whoever has the information about the pending state, he can exploit that. And this is what actually front running is doing. So even if your transaction doesn't go through, they can still capture metadata and other information to exploit you, correct? And that's where your infrastructure and your nodes come into play because they're in the privacy and they're dealing with private mempools. Yeah, you're right. So there is a lot of activity and data, metadata being leaked where your transaction is a pending state. So from IP addresses, your behavior, how it's mapped to your on-chain activity. And what we do, we protect all that segment and that information in a silo such that it does not get leaked and exposed. Now, consumer protection is huge right now. Customers are being hacked on a regular basis. Over almost $2 billion, I believe, in hacks and stolen funds since the start of this year, just in DeFi. Who are your core customers that want to use their, your products to protect themselves? Yeah, so there are two sides. One is retail and one is B2B. If we refer to retail, they are the persons who are a bit more technical. They know how to configure their wallet to up upgrade their connection. So if you think about how MetaMask, MetaMask works, the wallet, everyone knows it, it allows you to add a new network. And what you can do, you can use an Omnia secure connection, put it in your MetaMask wallet to secure your connection to the blockchain. So this is something that uh, a retail would do, a more technical, let's say, user. But we are also focused on B2B. So if you think about a target customer would be wallets, who would integrate this kind of technology right from the start and offering that extra edge to their users. That's awesome. Your team is from Romania, around the world, Brazil, as far as Brazil to Canada. You're here at East Toronto and Futures Conference for the first time. Talk to me about the activities and what you're involved in here. 
Yeah, so right now we are both at Futurist and E-Toronto. We set up uh, three bounties for the hackers uh, at the Dome. So we are going to be present there as well. But we're also here. We have some uh, speaking slots there. We're going to talk about some uh, issues out there with the privacy, what is happening. So we are really excited to be here. And uh, we hope to make a lot of friends around because uh, there are important companies here, in my opinion. That's awesome. Vitalik Buterin is going to be here. Uh, the godfather of Ethereum, the founder of Ethereum. Talk about what it's like to hear him speak on the big stage and how what he says might affect your protocol or inspire you guys to do different things or advance some of the technology that you already have. Yeah, I think I've been watching him really closely because I think it's really on the point with everything that is happening right now in the ecosystem. And actually, we were inspired by some of the things that he mentioned. If you think about how uh, is this bias with, centrali with the centralized infrastructure, People think about blockchain as being decentralized, but if you look closely, the access points, the nodes, they are centralized. So there is a bias. And I think he spoke in an interview about this. Uh, there is a bias by being, you have too many light nodes and too few uh, uh, full nodes which are servicing these light nodes. So there is a centralization bias here. And I think he mentioned this in some of the interviews and it actually inspired us to include that approach as well to help uh, decentralized ecosystem so this is also something important for us while ensuring the privacy we also want to ensure the reliability and the high availability of the protocol so by decentralizing the access points you're actually improving the availability that's awesome we're going to be here for three days we're going to have interviews with some of the industry best with omnia at east toronto and futurist amazing to talk to you right thanks